Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the SeerCast. Uh, this is our second episode in two days. So, three days, actually. Three days. So, we have, we have quite a bit to say. Once again, if you watch the BTS podcast, which was, uh, released just a couple days ago, this, we didn't have time to cover a lot of the lore related stuff that we needed to. Um, and Thanks. as a result, we have to have this one. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more later. I am Knight, or I'm Kerrigan in game, and with me today is Robo Hobo. Hello. Captain Lime. Hello, everyone. Gina. Oh, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah that's you. Uh, Kitten. Osborne, please. And Walter and Hablet are both in the chat. So, um, yes, we do have a, we do have a new, a newcomer that is going to be hanging out. And Hablet says hi, as does Walter. Okay. Um, so basically what happened was, Mod Phoenix was quote unquote sick, and Mod Saber had a quote unquote car incident. Um, they were supposed to be doing a pod, they were supposed to be doing a podcast for Jagex on, what was it, Friday? And instead, Mod Osborne said, okay, I'll take it. And it was a two hour lore podcast of epic proportions that was all was, over the place at best. It was all scatter and rain. It was, it was so all over the place, but he'd said so much stuff that there was no way we could have given it justice by trying to cram it into the last podcast, which was already longer than I wish it had been. So here we are. We're having a second podcast relating to the lore this time. So there, if you're a lore fanatic, um, there's, there's a lot to come here. Yeah. Um, and okay. And but we've first, lost Gina. huh? We've lost Gina. Yeah, we lost Gina temporarily. Oh well, she'll she'll be back. Um, so we'll, we're going to actually get started a little bit with a couple non-lore things. Uh, Mod Mark mentioned a couple things about a construction rework. Um, go find it on this monster thread. Um, he's going to fundamentally change the gameplay of construction, and that means more than just a graphical overhaul. It means Everything about the skill, which is great. Yeah, um, like finally. Yeah, finally neighborhoods right. and forts and stuff. It's pretty epic. Yeah, it looks it looks it looks nice. I'm interested to hear more about it. Hopefully, that'll be 2014 and before 2016. Um, I'm actually thinking soon. Yes, yeah, soon. Trademark. I'm hoping it'll be before 2013's out, but I know it's just going to be 2014, isn't it? I'm not sure what that was. Um, that but, was... But yeah, so there's... So it's the construction rework in the works, eventually. Um, the Dominion gloves are also getting a revamp, and this isn't really worth mentioning, other than for the fact that they were so heavily nerfed unintentionally by EOC. I, I can't remember exactly what Kitten said. Oh, I think... Well, it was from... I remember it's like Walter and Nobody were saying that I can't remember which hair it was, but one was like a finger shotgun, basically. Oh yeah, that was. I think, wait, uh, I think that's spellcaster. I think it, or Swift. Okay. Yes. Either one. Oh, that was Swift. And then obviously the Goliath gloves themselves were were kind of epically hilarious because you could just punch water fiends to death, and yeah. it would go faster than with the chaotic mall. It's like, wait, yeah, what? What is had this? Lines and everything. It's like, okay, can we have that back? Because now there's just gloves that die when when you're done. It's not even important anymore. Okay, but yeah. So there's that. Um, that'll be. I'm looking forward to that. It's been a while since I've been to the Dominion Tower, and it'd be nice to have a reason to go back. Um, and yeah, Gina's having some trouble. It looks bad. Yeah, <laughs> just constant desync. So if you're hearing anything like that sounds Skypey, 
Uh, that's why. Um, anyways, he also... Hum? No, nothing. Oh, okay. Um, he, Bob Mark also mentioned something about a minigame rework. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's not good. Okay. Yeah. That reminds me of that uh, thing that some people that went to Jagex heard about. They said that they're considering removing mobilizing armies, trouble brewing, and one small favor. Oh, that's not Wait, true. Wait, what? Wait, why would they be removing one small favor? I have no idea, and I really hope they don't do that because... Well, they, they said they're just considering it, of course, but, you know, maybe I should create a one small favor petition because I do not want to lose that quest. Why would yes, they please. Why would they remove a quest? It's not a mini game. That well, doesn't make sense. Um... Mobilizing armies and trouble brewing, uh, they're, they're dead. They just need some luck. I think mobilizing, I don't think anybody would really miss mobilizing armies. No, well, I just need a music track. I would miss it for one, for one, you know, for because what? there's a ham conspirator there. Cause there's and a what? Like, there's a ham conspirator there and that looks like it'd be a good quest line. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> But, well, yeah, I don't think anybody would really miss mobilizing armies. I miss Trouble Brewing, though, because that was actually somewhat fun. Like, the yeah. one mini game where I actually played it, and I'm like, wow, this actually isn't too bad. Why is it dead? It just needs some love. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it is. It, I do think a lot of people do like Trouble Brewing. The problem with the Trouble Brewing is there's absolutely no rewards that are worth getting. Um, yeah, that's true. And, and But, yeah, so that's... He he did mention that about the mini games, and that's kind of raises raises questions about well, which ones? Because he also mentioned uh, Mod Osborne in his podcast said, or in the live stream said that um, Fist of he they very much acknowledged that Fist of Gothics was not exactly being used. I wonder and, why. Yeah, I can't I imagine the combat XP anymore. Yeah. That's so sort of that's another, hmm? sort of another thing, though. That's like if you just give it a couple updates and update the rewards, people will probably go back to it at least initially. Probably spam it. Honestly, but, only the rewards are right. People do mini games. Just look at Limit Farm. That's like yeah. the grindiest content ever, but has such good reward or well, good rewards that people do it. Wait, yeah, which so one? What are you talking about? Limit Farm. Oh yeah. Like the con, like the gameplay of it is full, well, rather boring. Sorry. But, well. Yeah. It's well, I mean, it is. You yeah. do, you, like, they know, and Jagex has commented on this many times, like, it was a cool idea, but it's a five, five minute content, five minutes worth of content repeated 400 yeah, like, times. It's like, what, 40 hours? I want to yeah, say it's something like that. 46 hours, I think. Oh my god, okay, yeah. yeah. But then you have things like Trouble Brewing, which is actually pretty fun gameplay, but since it doesn't have any good rewards, people don't do it. Yeah. And it's so far out of the way. Yeah, it is. So, That's so, that, yeah. So when they think about reworking the mini games, they should really just focus on the rewards. Not that I like the rewards much at all, but that's what's going to get people going to it, not the gameplay of it, unfortunately. Yeah. If and they're going to redo the rewards, they better keep the hats. Of course. They better <laughs> keep the hats. Get rid of the hats. Well, yeah, because Lime, Lime needs those hats. Also, I'm holding one of those hats, and I better not have it disappear randomly. Yeah. Okay, so there's that. Um, <laughs> so that's some interesting stuff to think about, just with regarding future updates. Um, as much as Osborne said, there was some things said by other J mods um, regarding lore recently. Um, most notably was a couple things that um, Mod Srowley said about the desert. Um, he said, he mentioned um, pretty explicitly that Leela may or may not be the true pharaoh princess. Um, well, it's like hinted at like 20 plus times during the quest series. Yeah, I mean, but it's pretty much like it's like more confirmed yeah. Ali, Ali the Wise as well as Ito and Karsha as Kosha, pretty much. The only thing that I don't get is that that's not how an Egyptian line of succession works. Osman would be the king. Well, but, of course he would, but... But if you think about it, didn't, uh, didn't Osborne say 
in his stream. Like, he doesn't want to be tied down to real-world succession kind of things. Like, he doesn't want to... He doesn't want to have it too closely linked to actual real-world history or events. Because well, yeah. that's restrictive to, say the least. Oh, but on that point, though, Osmina actually seems aware that he's a part of the bloodline. Leela doesn't know, but the Pharaoh Queen wants to tell her about it and prepare her for it. But Osmond's like, if you talk to Simon Templeton, he talks about how Osmond wanted to have him get some bloodline documents for him, but he has no idea why Osmond would want this. And then Osmond hints in the um, Diamond and the Royal Quest, or is it Stolen Hearts, that something about how they, the Manified should have a new ruler or something. Don't know. It's been a long time since I've done any desert quests, so... Well, of course, the uh, name and the the Mastuba, which is Osmonton. Yeah. Okay. Walter says it's the first time they've ever actually addressed it, so that's yeah, that's the important part here. Is less that it's mentioned other, other places and more that they've never really mentioned it explicitly like this. Um... He also somebody also asks about a Zero Scarabras um, alliance, and he's pretty much like, I don't think so. But the reason why people thought there's a Scarabras Zero alliance is because apparently the Caliphate Queen dialogue with the head in the the player owned house. If you talk to it, it said like we are awaiting Zeros' return or something, but. Either that changed a long, long time ago, or it's just a misconception because I had the cop. Well, I don't, I don't have it myself, but I had someone else check it, and it doesn't say that at all. Yeah, it could just be like an idea that was scrapped or something, or it was just it was too. It was implying something that really wasn't going to happen, or something like Breaking that. Breaking history. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all I have to say is that maybe they were waiting for Zeros to return to kill him. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Uh, if you remember, they said that Shirali is currently working on a quest that involves Zeros' return. Did they? No, they didn't say mm-hmm. Shirali specifically, but they said the maker of Diamonds in the Row or something, which is Shirali. That's hmm. Shirali. It's currently in design, uh, design stages. Soon. Soon, Trace. Soon. Yeah. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, so, yeah, that's... That's some of that stuff. Um, he, there's also stuff about the world event um, and some interesting questions about Armadil. Uh, I think we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, actually, really, all of this Armadil stuff. I think the one thing to mention... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh. wait. Uh, on the topic of the Catholic king, uh, queen head, Walter says that Sirali checked the code and it apparently isn't there anymore. That uh, that dialogue where it mentions Zeros. Hmm. It was there event at one point? Uh, we don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, so it just, just randomly disappeared? Like... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ghost cat dialogue? Ghost oh, God. What? Maybe it was Slisky. <laughs> Hamlet <laughs> says maybe it was Slisky. Was just Slisky Is there somebody? I mean, I'm sure there's a screenshot of it floating around somewhere. Oh, if it did exist. Yeah, probably. Hmm. Interesting. So that's that's an interesting conspiracy theory to get riled up about or not. Um. So yeah, there's there's that stuff, and I think there's one more thing to talk about before we hit, just dive straight into the Osborne stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're like, oh god, H- here we go. Um, what? the I'm just gonna read straight off of the thread. Um, there's a character that the players see in the cutscene, but don't meet that will be revealed as a god in future content. The player doesn't know them as a god. They they brought this up when a god native to Gilinor was mentioned. Um, and uh, it seems like. V, I can't remember what it's what V eight V seven is what the V seven, yeah. V seven seems to be the most popular guest on the forums, and he's from 
Oh god, I can't remember the Terminate Quest. He's the founder of the Moon Clan. Yeah. He's in, what, Lunar Diplomacy? No, he's in World Epic. You see him in the country. He's in a a different one before that, though, isn't he? He's only referenced in the Moon Clan manual by name, but not in person. They don't don't even say his name, they just say view dashes. Hmm. Oh, and by the way, I looked up uh, all the potential people that it could be besides V7, and there's only like three. That we've seen in a cutscene, haven't met? Yeah. And that was some sort of ascension sort of thing that... Uh, who who else happen. would it be? Do you know off the, offhand? The other ones aren't nearly as likely, but... Especially the second one. But, uh, the, the other one is Robert the Strong and during the cutscene. Uh, in Tale of Two Cats, you technically do meet him, but you don't meet him as Robert the Strong. But yeah, you, you meet him as Bob the yeah. Jagex cat. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's likely, though. It's just because there's like a beam of light up in the just cutscene when he almost kills the dragon king or something. Yeah. But, uh, the other one is funny. It's Rabbit Jack. <laughs> <laughs> that's... Because, yeah. That's actually yes. highly. That's that, <laughs> imagine that, Rob. Imagine Rabbit Jack being a god. Okay. Oh would, gosh. <laughs> that, would that would be very interesting. You would be putting the irate in pirate. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. Why did I just say that? <laughs> Anyways. Okay, that's it. I quit. I'm done. <laughs> and that's the podcast. We're finished. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways. Lime puns are best puns. Oh, man. Lemons. Oh, dear. (sighs) No. Anyway. Anyways. Um, yeah, so that's, that's an interesting little piece of information that they gave us. Um, I think they've, they've hinted at that, that, but I don't think they've said explicitly, like, there's someone the player sees in a cutscene, but doesn't meet. They've said, like, there's there's a character that we've met, but haven't met, or it's, there's some there's some really Seen convoluted way met. of saying it that they did. Seen, but not met. I think. Yeah. In other words, there's a cutscene of the past. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's, it, it's, we'll see, we'll see where that goes. Anyways, um, moving right along into the Mod Osborne live stream stuff, uh, there's a lot a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to cover. So I'm not going to even try and cover it all. Um, pretty much, there's. I have a giant list of topics. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 topic, subtopic things that I'd like to touch on. Hopefully it doesn't take too long for some of these and we have more time to go over the other more important ones. But uh, just starting off... Um, he begins talking about the Ozan quest because the intent of his thing was to do a de- uh, developer, um, a developer commentary, a director's commentary on the Ozan quest. Uh, unfortunately, that, or fortunately, I guess for us, unfortunately for Walter, fortunately for the best of us, for the rest of us, um, it didn't quite work out that way. It just became everything. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but but so you mentioned some interesting things about um about Ozan and the Ozan's quest. So if anybody has anything they want to bring up here. Ozan's 13. God, I love Ocean's 13. <laughs> yeah, the Ocean's movies are cool. I love the Ocean's movies. Anyway, that's off topic ish. Um but yeah, he did he did mention that the original quest name for the Ozan quest it was going to be Ozan's thirteen, because you could you you would used to be able to play as a thirteen year old Ozan, and then it became it changed names a couple times and became Stolen Hearts at the end. Seems like it's changed quite a lot since then, because it's like no saga at all. Maybe the maybe the story was going to be the same though. Yeah, it looks like it looks like the story is largely the same, um, because it definitely now, explores so Ozan's past. Um, it doesn't like it have you playing through as Ozan escaping Al Karid, but yeah, that used to be yeah it used to be only that, but 
now it now it's been expanded significantly more. I guess that explains why the char- player character doesn't do much in the quest. It's mostly OSM. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. originally it was supposed to be just OSM. Yeah, you're kind of following him around and helping him do stuff. It will be interesting to see, at least, finally. Falling into calphite holes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was interesting, um... They did mention that Ozan will feature heavily in the Het and Krondus storylines. So. Crimea River. Right. Yeah. <laughs> one of the names for it. Hmm. Would that be the Krondus one, like Alligator Tears or something? Yep. Oh, cool. See you later, Alligator. <laughs> Is there anything else regarding Ozan that we should mention? Anybody else have anything? Well, it was originally going to start the Rising Sun quest because Tunican apparently means Rising Sun or something similar. Oh yeah, that's true. But then, but he mentioned that um, they didn't want to do it in Falador because it hadn't been graphically reworked. Uh. Which is which is an interesting reason. It was like, huh? I guess that is that's true. Can't it hasn't been reworked in a really long time. It reminds me of that one time. I think it was Mob Mark who said this, but he's like, I don't like it when people go to unupdated areas. They're like, no, we just we don't want you to go there yet. We haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> yeah. Like Soon, trademark. Um, but yeah, okay. So I think that covers everything from Ozan. Um, we're going to mention next up is alternate god stuff. So this is talking about the lesser known gods or the basically unknown gods that we've talked about we mentioned um the the con- con- confirmation that there is a god that we don't know but we know um we know of but we don't we know we know first. of but we don't know and we mentioned that a little bit earlier but also um osborne mentions quite a bit about Tuska, Skargaroth, Marimbo, and um, Braska Prime. God, I just will so never Skargaroth, let that go. Tuska, Marimbo, and Brassica Prime walk into a bar. No, oh no, no. Skargaroth is dead. Very dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Skargaroth is dead, but he mentions because he's important because that's where Guthix got his power. I mean. That's who Guthix killed to become Guthix. Yeah, to become Guthix. I mean, yeah. Um, also, I do want to mention a little bit about Tuska here. He mentions that they have "quote unquote" big, big plans for Tuska. Maybe Tuska is going to be huge. Yeah, probably <laughs> physically going to be huge. Um, I just had like a. The whole small. I just had a thought of Tuska just like this massive pig charging through the Vera. Right then, I'm here. Hi. 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 Uh, we Hi. have we have Amascut joining us. Hello, guys. Sorry. Um, I totally forgot about this because I was all excited about the uh, Doctor Who announcement. Nice. Well, well done, and we're yeah. glad you can make it. Thank you. <laughs> we are just as a um, heads up. We are just now starting the Osborne lore stuff. Like. So Brilliant. you kind of got here at a good time. Good. Okay. Not interrupting anything too much. <laughs> not not too much. We just Brilliant. finished those and stuff. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, Do you have anything to say? Uh, not really. It's kind of just basically Osborne kind of awkwardly rambling about the desert that he doesn't know much about. It seems, but um, <laughs> basically, I think he's just trying to leave it all up to Sraly. Which, to be honest, that's kind of a good choice. Yes, Rowley's been working with the desert since like 2005. Yeah, he's been he's been working on that stuff for a while. He he wrote the original Tumic and Street. What more can you ask for in a lead cameo? Yeah, I know, right? He, he's been around since the start, so I'm, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, so um, getting back getting back to Tuska here, um, we were we were talking a little bit about um. The, the lesser known god, the lesser gods, the alternate alternate gods is what I called them. Um, Tuskus, Gargaroth, Marimbo, and Braska Prime are the four. 
um, that I mentioned by name. I'm sure there are others that he mentioned in the in the in the quest or in the not quest in the live stream. But um, Walter says, I'm just going to read straight out of what Walter just said in the chat. Um, why is why is his sword so important? Where this is Scargroth, correct? Um, why is Skargroth's sword so important? If it's the Elder, why was the Scavenge sword mentioned in the first place? And that's the one that um, Guthix picked up and killed him with. Well, um, because he found a sword. Yeah. He something to kill Skargroth with. Otherwise he couldn't kill Skargroth. Well, yeah. And it, it is kind of strangely confusing, though, because he like yeah. he kills Skargroth, then but then... a different sword. The, yeah, then there's a different sword, and that's the elder sword. It's like, wait, what? Yeah. I, I think they shouldn't have used a sword. Like, they should have used an arrow, and he shot him in the eye with it or something, and they embedded into his brain, and he died. That would. But they'd already good. blinded Tuska. So. That's true. Yes, now she's even more mindless. Yeah. Now she rampages oh, yeah. around and can't see anything. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who aren't super familiar with um, with Tuska. Uh, let's see exactly where he says it. Um, it's he, Tuska is pretty much the mindless god that is pure evil, based cares nothing about anything but destruction. Like that's that is Tuska. Like, I would literally call her the goddess of destruction. Yep. Like not not even to infringe on a mascot, but she is the literal god of destruction, while a mascot is the corrupted goddess of rebirth. Yep. Well, to be honest, it's not really more like a, uh, a goddess. It's more like a gigantic pig of doom. <laughs> well, she she is a goddess. It's just she she has no control. She, she is also a gigantic... She literally embodies just destruction. She has no specific followers. Like, she doesn't acknowledge them because she doesn't care about them. Yeah, mindless she destruction. Just, she happens to be a giant boar that got god powers by killing a god by accident or something. Really which we'll know. which we'll probably find out when we see more content with her, because we've been told we will. I'm I'm still. I admit I'm a little disappointed that they're actually uh, officially making um, Marimbo a god rather than the cool kind of backstory that could have been with Atmekin really being Marimbo. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed they're dodging that. Well, I don't know. Yeah, we'll Is, see what happens. Interesting. It was interesting that they said that Pest Control Island was once a Marimbo site. Yeah. I was like, wait, huh? It yeah. makes sense. It's there, there's make not sense. really been any hints to that previously, though. So it's kind of like, well, I guess they say you can find some kind of architecture that is Marimbo-esque, but does that just mean like? I just call that lazy graphics team at the time. Well, not lazy, but just worse perhaps at the time. <laughs> perhaps <laughs> the pest to this world for a party. Yeah, that's the, where the Void Knights stand stuff. Yeah. Hey, I get it, guys. The uh, the pests, the pests just want to party. They just they just want to <laughs> party, man. They just want to have fun. Yeah. Party crashers. Just want to have fun. No, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> no. That's worth no. That's worth the irate pun. Yeah, you <laughs> missed you missed me say doing the irate, doing the I, pirate irate pun thing earlier. <laughs> oh. Right. Not one of my finer moments. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> the white knights do dance a lot. Oh dear. This could this could go But dancing is a sin. Yeah. <laughs> oh that quest. Um, yeah. And that's that's a reference to one piercing note. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Just that that entire quest just like how to sour Ceridoman for everybody who has a brain. Ceridoman. Really yeah. Totally honest, that was the first point, like, official point in the game, aside from just the little sneaking suspicions of the White Knights, mm -hmm. that Ceridoman himself was really painted in a bad light, because yep. previously it was just like, oh, the White Knights follow him, and the Temple Knights follow him, but there's a little something-something wrong with them. Like, Ham? You just knew they were insane. That wasn't on Ceridoman. Yeah, they're just bad. <laughs> insane. The white, the white Knights and the Temple Knights, that wasn't really on Ceridoman. That was on them. They had their political uh, machinations running. But yep. then, what piercing note was literally, wait a minute, Ceridoman could really be a pretty nasty guy. Yep. yep. Yeah, and then so that, was, that was an interesting turnaround there. That point onward, it was like, every mention of Ceridoman was the sneaking suspicion that he's wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was all downhill from there, basically. Yeah. yeah. 
we'll cover I, that. Literally at the point where yeah. I was like, you know, Zami suddenly doesn't seem like such a horrible person. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about all of this stuff a little bit later when we talk about each god individually yep. as what, what he said. So hold those thoughts for a little bit. Um, and I, unless somebody else, do, do we have anything else that we want to mention about the other gods? Nope. Not really. Don't say, yeah. He mentioned, he mentioned some stuff about it, and if you're interested with that, uh, <laughs> find it in the stream I guess like it, it, there's some interesting stuff and I guess stay keep keep an eye on future updates but um, yeah so next up I want to talk about the elder gods he talks a little bit about the elder gods maybe some connections with the eastern lands um, elder artifacts uh, Thok as an elder god or as an elder god tier character you know tier Thok <laughs> I mean you have the elder god tier and then you have tier Thok Thought creates worlds with his fists. I mean, it was it was confirmed. Technically, the Elder God said too, because in the uh, Gal dialogue, it actually says they tried to make worlds with their bare hands at first. <laughs> <laughs> that actually means that Thok is of higher tier than the Elder Gods because he he didn't try; he succeeded. <laughs> he just did. <laughs> Time for beating history. Just punch the hell out of it. Oh yeah, and as I, I guess that now is a good time to um, bring this up. Um, Osborne mentioned in the in the live stream that as a joke for as a um, for his like test for new devs. Yeah, his test for new devs <laughs> is where he has a quest called Breaking History. Yeah. Um, Wait, and it... you have to spot the lore fails basically. Uh, I, I I want him to release that to the public because I want to see how well I do. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, they, I was just surprised that he didn't just use Robo's uh, Lore's test. Yeah, but yeah. the breaking breaking history. Um, of course, the sequel to that would be beating history. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget manipulating history. Oh man, oh, no. <laughs> warping history oh. and eventually that's killing that's history. Hey, that's dungeoneering. <laughs> <laughs> it well, is. Finally, see the finale with that. Have a well, the very wrong finale. <laughs> <laughs> like, unfortunately, with the whole with the whole six age thing. I really, really, honestly think they should have waited another year before they did the six age. I mean, I know they were really excited and wanted to do RS three and have something new, but the sixth age came a little too early in my opinion. They really needed to release Elf Quest, Mornings and Part Three, and finish Dungeoneering before they did any of this. Yeah, I do agree on the dungeoneering part. I do. I, I agree on the dungeoneering. Yeah. I, I don't because, think the elf quest is necessary because I can see how they would um, tie Saren coming back in yeah. with the elf quest. Like well, the elf you, now it, mornings like, end part three. Is, Dark elves' goal was apparently to summon Zamorak. It was never officially confirmed, but there were a lot of hints to it. And then Osborne just goes straight up and says, "Yeah, yeah, they worship Zamorak." Oops, because well, that's, that's what he does. Yeah, he he sets things in stone, like outside of the game, and then you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? <laughs> because he's too excited. Yeah. Um, it, it, that's actually probably what it is. It, um, we brought him into this grind pool for about an hour. Yeah, All so of the secrets would be gone. Yeah, <laughs> oh, dear there would God. Be- there would be no purpose to this crying pool anymore. We'd know everything. <laughs> we probably <laughs> would. Us. That's a start. <laughs> he knows who we are and such. He does, he does explicitly know. Um, Noises. <laughs> but yeah, um, so, he mentioned that. Um, he says a lot of stuff about the Elder Artifacts. Um, is there anything specifically that anybody wants to bring up with regards to that? Um, were, the like, resizable I, I thing. Vote to call the, um, I vote to call the sword the Sword of Worlds. I, I just call it the Rift Sword. Hmm, that one's not bad either. But just Elder Sword. And we just we just call everything the Elder Something, and then it, it turns out that none of them are called the Elder Something except for the Elder Kill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the thing that the thing that we don't really mention as the Elder anything because we usually just say it's the Kiln. Yeah. Or the Tokar. So the only one that actually has Tukar. Elder in its title is the Kiln, and for all we know, it could actually be called the Kiln of Fu- uh, Fool. Yeah, it's yeah, true. true. 
That's actually really difficult to say. Let's go with Elder Kiln. The Kiln of Full? Yeah. It just, like, something about saying full last just sounds very strange in my tongue. <laughs> kill the full. Hmm. Kill I don't know. But, uh, yeah, all the others are, like, the Staff of Armadil, the Stone of Jazz, uh, the Crown Archival. Well, it's not actually called the Staff of Armadil. Yeah. I have no idea what it's called. We don't know what it's called yet, yeah. The Super Duper Staff of Awesomeness. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> Walter of just... Awesomeness. Yeah. The Staff of Awesomeness. Uh, Walter yeah, just mentioned in the chat, yeah. the orb on the Staff of Armadil was added by its yeah, future okay. owners. Thus he didn't the orb... say that was the case. He said that could be the case. Okay. You mean the orb is at, be- oh, at best a god, yeah. a god artifact, not an elder artifact. So our yeah. battle staves have a god item on them, but Sliski has a weapon that is elder powered with an orb of unknown origin. Yep. He probably just farmed some glycors and got the orb, but the staff itself was the thing of power, not the orb on top. Which we we didn't really catch on to. All of us, you know, we're all like, yeah, that orb, that orb is the thing of power, and it's just a normal battle staff, because that's how we made our staff. Our yeah, we, you, you thought that after we could make our own, that no we would deal. understand that. Yeah. It took but us. It, it took us like two staff. years to figure out, and it took Osborne just... saying it explicitly for us to be like, "Oh wait." Yeah. I mean, honestly, we should have caught on to it because armadil runes, not not gut, not jas runes, not full runes, armadil runes. Are well, made... we didn't know who full was at that point, so. Yeah. But, but so not, just like... elder, not elder god runes, armadil runes were what we got from using the dust, which means that. Armadil is likely the thing that put the orb on top of there. Yeah. Well, technically, the the name of the item is given by the player. Yeah, Just but still, stuff. I mean, if if I were making, if I were making those runes, I certainly would not call them Armadil runes. Well, back then we only know it's called the Staff of Armadil, though. Yeah. We didn't even know no, no, called. like regardless, Armadil rune sounds kind of stupid to be totally honest. We could just call it like enhanced air runes. That that would sound <laughs> stupid. Bird runes. <laughs> bird runes. <laughs> Giant bird seed. <laughs> no idea. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's. I'm glad yes. you pointed it out though, because it, it offers a lot of very interesting thoughts that mm-hmm. perhaps the odds have been tinkering with their elder artifacts and have done things to them. Mm-hmm. Oops. Wait. Before we move on, there's uh, another thing I'd like to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, he said during the podcast that there was like, um, they made at least ten versions of the Stone of Just before they actually succeeded in making it. The one that we see today. Oh, the Elder Gods did. Yeah. I think I know where this is going. Stone of Just Mark 1. Stone of Just Mark 2. I'm just gonna make a thread now. I'm just gonna be like, Stone of Just Point 1. She's like, describe (laughs) one. Well, we also know that um, Draken's been confirmed to actually be not dead. He's actually been confirmed to be in his tower after he has recently confirmed not to be in his tower. Yeah, and then <laughs> Stone of Jass after it was confirmed that maybe he wanted the Stone of Jass. But he, he wanted to go back nobody home. ever mentioned, nobody ever thought he was actually dead, did they? I did. I really thought it would be awesome if Draken was dead and he was replaced by Keros, who's been manipulating everybody the entire time. By who? Keros. You know, like the ring. Oh, 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 yeah, okay, got it. Hit the ring. Yeah. Wouldn't that be incredible? That would that would be wild. Yeah. I already like this. That would this be a better. really big twist. Like, he's just been, he's been hiding in the tower with his ring, manipulating the entire vampire army the entire time. Yeah, nobody, nobody sees, nobody's seen him for years, so. Exactly. And the ring has minor persuasion powers. So mm-hmm. potentially he could just be using it on different people and... Very possibly, Venezuela was in a, on the, and the two of them killed Draken originally back in like the third age, fourth yeah. age, whenever Keros was supposedly vanished. Because we don't know his fate, he just vanished one day. Yeah, he just poofed. Yeah. Yep. Now, admittedly, his ring did end up in Frankenstein, uh, Frankenstein Castle, but. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he we knew th- Draken roamed originally, so potentially, you know, Keros could be convincing people he was Draken and ring was stolen, or the ring was lost. So, that's why he's been holed up in the tower all these years. Perhaps. 
but now that's kind of confirmed not to be the case. Yeah. Um, I I also like the fact that it's definitely confirmed that the Stone of Jazz has been in the area, um, in Mauritania area at one point. You mean the Dayalt mine? Yeah, Yeah. with Dayalt, because, I mean, we already had that little thing with Zimberfizz mentioning smell dragon dragon there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So now it's kind of officially, yes, there was an Elder artifact, likely the stone, in Mauritania at one point. Wouldn't that have been what... Wasn't the um, the the rebellion Zamorak's rebellion was in Mauritania, wasn't it? That's that's actually likely how he got the stone. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not said where it is actually. It seems, other than, other but that's where his base of power is. So yeah. or was. That's so a good point. It makes sense that you would have the stone there, and then that's and that's where he got his power, and then when Zamorak banished him. Oh, yeah. look, there's the stone. Like That actually makes a ton of sense for how he got it, because it had to be in Mauritania at one point, and we don't know how Zamorak actually got the stone. So it makes very good sense that he managed to nick it out of Mauritania, because, like, you know, Draken was keeping it safe, or Zeros was keeping it hidden there. Mm-hmm. That, that's a very good point. I still really think that Zamorak actually had the, the Sword of Worlds at one point. Rift Sword. Yeah. And I think when Guthix awoke, because Guthix stripped stripped Zamorak of both the Stone of Joss and the staff. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very likely that if he had the sword too, perhaps this strong Guthix point took it back from him too, That's... but in the process broke the sword. The elder strong pointy thing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The elder oh, pokey stick. <laughs> the, the pokey stick. The elder stick of poking. Um, yes. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting, interesting stuff. That's what Doc would call it. It is Probably. what Doc would call it. In before Saga. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember oh, Zami having the staff at the end of the Third Age. I could be wrong though. No, he doesn't. He, he stabs Zamorak, or he stabs Zeros with it, and then we don't really know what happens to it. That so was my the second year. He hung on to it. He hung on to it. Saradoman nicked the Stone of Jass from him, and then, um, when Gothix Gothix awoke and it stole the staff of the gods. <laughs> he got the drop. I'm pretty sure the gods were taking the staff of Armadale from Zamorak when they banished him after killing Zeros. Yeah, that's that's probably the case. So they yeah, probably, they one of them out. Yeah, Armadale probably got the staff and then Sam Saradoman got the stone. Wait, so how did they stole the staff of Armadale back when Zamorak got it? Yeah. Well, yeah, Armadil probably got back. Hey, well, give that. It was the staff of Armadil when Zamorak got it. Yeah. No, I think maybe it wasn't. Like, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. It's like it's it's now it's called that, but it wasn't back then. Yeah, and then I when Armadil took it, that's when it became the staff of Armadil. Yeah. I can't think of called, any instance where Armadil supposedly had it before the Third Age. It was called the God Staff of Armadil during the. Curse of Zeros mini quest by Valdez and then by pretty much uh, everyone else. Maybe maybe he brought it to Gilinor then. No, no, no. He, it was confirmed that he found it on Gilinor. Oh, and he okay. was sent it to Gaga by something else. Other than yeah. Other stuff. Interesting. Yeah, the, they're, they're, uh, the elder elder artifacts are very confusing, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the histories Artifact. of them are just so... They're so convoluted. Because it... I mean, honestly, somebody really needs to straighten it out. But I mean, it's it's interesting to kind of speculate. That's for sure. I think Walter is about to give us a lecture. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Can I just say one thing that I was trying to get at with the um, with the, there were multiple multiple versions of the Stone of Joss. Perhaps. Um, well, it begs the question: What happened to all of those other versions? The same thing that happened. To different versions of the boats that are trying to be made to go to Kudo Asylum. <laughs> oh, gosh. We oh, lost so number seven. But yeah, so, um, Walter in the chat says, um, it likely went to Armadil, the staff likely went to Armadil, but Armadil lost it a bit later, perhaps to Zamorak. Uh, Guthix was the one who saw it on Gilinor first. Um, Guthix found it on Gilinor. Armadil arrives as a god, finds the staff, names it after himself. 
Um, the staff was stolen by a thief and then was used to take down Zeros. Yeah. Um, unknown, but... The Armadillo pres- likely kept it somewhere, just like safekeeping, but didn't really think highly of it. Yeah. And unknown, thief, but assumed... Like- in, and then after it was used to take down Zeros, it is unknown where it is, but it is assumed to be in Armadillo's hands. Um, Armadillo loses the staff before leaving the world, and then the Guardians I- find it and guard it. My, my guess is he would hide it, and then the Guardians were able to track it down. Yeah. Yeah, that could be it. Like, you know, just hide it before he leaves, because he didn't want to have anything to do with it anymore. Since it was, well, you know, something he found on Gelinor, and wait, he had no reason to take it away anyway. Wait a second. I think you guys are hardcore lore failing. Didn't uh, Armadale leave midway through the Third Age? Well, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was at the end of the Third Age. Yeah. It was right after, after Xavier Peace died. Right after Zamorak blasted 4 and 3, but before Gothics woke up. So pretty much right at the end. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it was it was Zamorak's... It was that blasting that woke up Guthics, wasn't it? Yeah, it was also what killed most of the Avians. Yep. Except for the ones in the Cowboys dungeon. Yeah, so he, he left right at the end of the Third Age before the edicts and so yeah so there's yeah that's some interesting stuff there okay um, I think we've spent a little bit too much time on the elder artifacts but yeah. it's it but it's a treasure trove of information and he says a lot of stuff about it and I mean it's it, it's it's some pretty interesting stuff so um, I'm gonna move along uh, wait wait spam's huh? promotion. Yes, Walter did type up a huge thing about the Elder Artifacts. It's on Twitter. Find it. Read it, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think you 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 tweeted that yes. uh, yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, a while ago. Okay. Well, either way, it's it's up there. It's uh, there. Yeah, go check it out. Um, it's very interesting. So, from the Elder Gods and the Elder Artifacts and stuff... Um, we're going to move forward and talk a little bit about the specific gods themselves, the uh, the main gods of Gilinor. Um Starting with Zeros. So, what, what if anything, if everything, um, hopefully not everything, did he say about Zeros that you guys want to mention? Well, he says that he really doesn't think Zeros is evil in the sense that wants to do something where he truthfully thinks he's doing what's right for the mortals but I'm not going to buy that too much because Sarah Doman thinks the same thing thank god you're eating your mic <laughs> oh eating sorry mic? I'm, yeah I'm, lime I'm just typing thing. oh uh, it sounds like you're eating your mic yeah um, yeah I'm uh I'm, I'm writing up a rant about how much mm-hmm. sucks now well, okay, okay, no, he's he's secretly in a horse mask behind his computer and he's chewing on the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Please. Horse mask. Okay, we have our first image of the podcast. Yay. Anyways, um yeah. So I'll quote what was said while Walter said on the thread about it. Zerus feels that what he does is for the good of the mortals. Zerus evil to what he does though. I don't know. And before Zeros followers, he uses his proof that Zeros can do no wrong somehow. <laughs> no, Zeros followers are not, in fact, Zerodoman followers, so I don't think that's going to happen. Actually, they pretty much are pretty rather similar. They're they're not that similar. Well, they're not straight up brainwashed. I mean, like, Zerodoman's followers will say, Oh, Zerodoman didn't kill the Naraji, he just raided their towns. He didn't do that bad, <laughs> it was for the greater good. And whenever someone says something bad about Zeros, it's like... Oh, no, he can't do that. He's not evil. Look at as an actor, he's good. He's nice to us. He gave us ancients and curses. He can't be evil. Okay. <laughs> just okay. I, 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 Should we go there? Okay. I'll just, I'll just say okay. Yep. But yeah, so the, and apparently Zeros does have concept art. Um, and hell? apparently, quote unquote, Mod Crow is the best vessel for Zeros. I wonder how that Dark works, though, because he doesn't have a body. Like, probably just like a picture of mist. Yeah. Soren. Yeah. 
Thank you. <laughs> and he's back. Uh, oh, yeah, you have uh, Nody Man in the chat. Yeah, Nody Man is in the chat. I don't know whether he's going to say anything or not, but... Well, kind of like the whole thing. Oh, sorry. Um, like with the whole vessel thing, it could might just be too outlandish. But if he doesn't have a body, then it could just be like a spirit possessing something. Just you're talking. I don't know. Possessing the spirit. Well, possessing someone else to manifest. I don't. I have no idea. But it's just weird stuff. I still think. Okay. I was, I was just like in before Kenneth. Why? Oh God. <laughs> Well, since Kenneth isn't car shy now, um, yeah. would have been amazing. Anyways, <laughs> I think that would have been amazing and ridiculous at the same time. It'd been so ridiculous, mm -hmm. but it would have been absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, I honestly would have laughed my ass off. If, you know, we we trot over to um, trot over to Witch Haven, walk up to him, and we're like, Kenneth, what's going on? And he's like, Well, uh. I recently discovered something about myself, player. And you, like, <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? And he like shrinks back down to child size and he goes, "I recently discovered something about myself, player." And like stares. And at you're like, "What?" Jesus Christ! And you're like, what the hell are you doing? You're scaring me. And then he grows into a giant Majra and is like, "I recently discovered something about myself, player." And we're and like, like, "What?" Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> and before his shit voice acting, I tried to hook you up with a small girl. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. <laughs> I tried to hook you up with a small girl. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That would be... I love yeah, that, I love that in before shit you. voice Apparently acting, though. Them to think That's they, great. Think they did. <laughs> oh, man, that would have been creepy. Hardugni! <laughs> Just, just thinking for the voice acting, like, the small child form is really the Majorat voice. It's like, oh god. <laughs> just right now. Unfortunately, those children are still alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ah. Uh. Oh no, I am a them. child. Listen to my voice. I am clearly young and innocent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I've wild. never heard these kids, but I, I can just imagine... It's terrifying. Give you an idea. So, bad. so basically, it's about an eight-year-old child, and he talks like this. I, <laughs> yeah. I am clearly young and innocent. Listen to me. Listen to the voice of the children of this age. Clearly, clearly, <laughs> I am yeah. just yeah, it's disturbing. <laughs> it's yeah. so bad. That's the real reason why they had him grow up is because they couldn't hire a child voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do the same for the children at the Blumbridge portal. Yeah. Uh, well... That's totally why they grew Kenneth up, because they were originally gonna, like, fully voice act that quest, and they couldn't get a young child to do it. You should be thankful they did that, or else they would have sounded like the kids at Plumbridge Portal. Yeah, really. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rut row. I mean, honestly, just, just speaking of Kenneth, I feel like I'm the only one that actually didn't... that did, didn't have a problem with him growing himself up. I thought it was hilarious. Oh, that's that's where Gene and I came up with the Kenneth is car shy thing. Like he randomly goes, he randomly grows up. He it's like all this stuff that's like okay. Like this is. I, I feel like I feel like that bit was very well covered. Like if, it you, was. if you did all the additional dialogue with him, it made perfect sense. He was just like, "Well, I was young and I decided to grow up." And you go, "What?" And he goes, "Isn't that how everyone does it?" Like I thought yeah. that was perfectly executed. <laughs> I thought it was, it was like, what even is time? And it, 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 it <laughs> tied perfectly to his really strange nature. Yeah. There was clearly something very amiss with his magic. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like, all of this, like, my my silly Kenneth is Karsh, I think, I mean, it's grounded in fact. It's not just, like, yeah. completely random, like, oh, it's Farmer Fred is clearly a Majorat. No, that's, that <laughs> that's a is joke. random. But Kenneth, like, that actually had some... You know, basis to it. Like there was, yeah, there was some viability really to it. Screwed up magic. It, it could very well be Majorat magic. And I mean, clearly, we know that Karshai didn't know he was Karshai, exactly. and he has some kind of magical whatever. In this, in this instance, um, Karshai didn't have access to his magical whatever. But um, and Nodi Man says Farmer Fred is a Majorat. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it, it it's it's just yeah, like that's 
I, I, I still love that theory, though. It's, it's so great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, back on topic? Yeah, back yeah. on topic. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Um, there's, like, this thread on the RuneScape Lord Discussions uh, forum. Uh, it's Troubles Choosing Your Faction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically, oh, yeah. it, it gives you... It gives you like this, uh, the test that you had in, um, The World Wakes, and it determines which god would be right for you. I thought it was really well. Robo and I took the test, and we looked through the statistics of the test, and we found out that most of the, most of the Zerosians did not actually end up getting the Zerosian philosophy. (laughs) Actually, all but one. (laughs) Yeah. Who is, who is all but, oh, you're talking about on the Clint forums. There's 13 out of 14. Um, there were. You're talking. Where is this thing? Hang on. Let me. Oh, lore form. I've never. I haven't seen it. Let me link it to you. Then who? But, then what do you mean by thirteen of fourteen? Like there's. There's fourteen people who say they follow Zeros that took the test, and there's thirteen of those that didn't get Zeros, and the one who did looks like they're lying because they still complained about the test. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The Erosian the, rage. The Zerosian followers. Anyway, did, here's the threat. Mm-hmm. That doesn't actually... Okay, you're spamming it at me. That first link wasn't actually a link that was good. Because you said you'd never been to the lore forum. I had to spam it. Oh, I've been to the lore forum, but I've never actually, like, read anything on the lore forum. I've been there to acknowledge that it exists. So, Robo and I... Anyways. Robo and I took some guesses, and we we figured out that... Zerosians don't actually follow Zer... Uh, well, this is what we think. We don't think that Zerosians actually follow Zeros because of his whole philosophy. It's mostly because of the coolness factor. Like, you could argue that Zeros is a cooler god than every other one. But... Well, he's that, he's that like... Like, I, I hate to... I really hate to use this analogy. But like that... The, the, the tall, dark, and handsome... <laughs> that, well, like, no, I'm, I mean, I'm being serious here, though. Like, he's this, the unknown, the mysterious guy. It, it makes perfect sense. Like, I can see a huge number of Zerosians not following for him for his purpose. And, yeah. uh, just, it, it, it's always it's confused me why so many people are Zeros obsessed, because even when he was introduced mysteriously originally, people didn't like him because he was clearly evil. I, I'm gonna, I can say, personally, I, I like him because I want to see more of him, less, yeah. be, less than because I want to see, because I actually follow him. Like, I don't, I legit don't really know who, which god I would actually follow in the, like, if, yeah. like, like, I'm, I'm gonna probably end up taking this test myself anyway, um, just to see where I stand. I'm but I can, I can, I can, well, not right now because I'm <laughs> kind of in the middle of hosting this thing. But I, I can see myself ending up with an armadillo or or one of the super centrist kind of gods. Yeah. I, I ended up picking Saren, and I took the test and pulled Saren, but I didn't post on the thread. Yeah, I got Gothic nice. Sheer and Zamorak. Which is pretty I, I, I got Sheer Zamorak. I got <laughs> That's there is no surprise there whatsoever. Yeah, most people who took the test got accurate results, except for the Zerosians and a couple Saradominists. <laughs> well, that's because Saradominists are equally brainwashed about their god. That is true. Um, <laughs> what, just thirties is just gonna watch this podcast. He's, he's just gonna <laughs> rage right now. Yeah, he's gonna be very unhappy with our discussion topics, but that's too bad. <laughs> oh hi, a wild orange appears as well. So. I don't see Hello, orange. orange. This is starting to get very crowded very fast. Yeah. Well, th- well, there's a lot of people that are in the chat and aren't actually talking though. So. Okay, that's like three. <laughs> well, I mean, but considering we only had five in the in the call to begin with, uh, like actually talking in the call, now we've got six, but we've added another person and we've added really two more people in the chat, and that's. Don't yeah, forget Nodi. Oh, I know Nodi's in the chat. Yeah, let's. Yeah, I I agree. Wait. Walter says we need to get back to um, Osborne. Uh, that uh, the Zer- the Zeros thing um, that that does lead us. That is a good kind of segue into 
um, talking a little bit more about the other gods. Uh, next up will be Armadale. Let's see what they said about that. With maybe a little bit about maybe mentioning touching on Bandos here because they've they've kind of been coupled together um, recently. With oh yeah. Potentially being in the next world event. Yeah. There's like it's possible there's an Armadale quest in development right now. It's also possible that Mod Raven is doing this quest. <laughs> it would it would make sense that Mod Raven would be doing an Armadale quest. Just just saying. No, it was also said in the quest that. Uh, not not the quest, but it's sudden the uh, whatever you call it, the uh Mod Raven was doing a quest right now that will either expand one of the three main storylines for the sixth stage, which is either the Dragonkin, the Elder Gods, or the God. And since we have a hint that he's doing Armadale, I think it has something to do with the gods. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I think, I think we can also that. safely assume that uh it'll involve killing children. Uh <laughs> anyway, just saying. That was actually involved in my uh in my question, which was about Asheron, so there is our obligatory penguin reference for the day. Yeah. All right, our penguin yeah. reference. Oh, oh. And also about Armadale, apparently he's a romant- romantic, and that he thinks that everyone can get along if they just sit down and talk at a table. And because of that, he's kind of naive. His goals aren't really possible. Well. I'm not gonna Isn't say that what else. got all of his all of his followers killed the first time? Pretty like, much, yeah. Legit. <laughs> he's changed from that. And he's apparently going to be less black and white, but that's still going to be noticeable. He's not yeah, that would be that would be a real wake up call if your diplomacy efforts just completely fail, and then you end yeah, up he, losing all your followers as a result. You be you basically cause the genocide of almost an entire race. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it was more of the stun of Jazz killing them, but you still let, you still didn't take decisive action because you thought you could sit sit back at a table and... Um, and would not get burninated. Yeah, diploma, di- get it out, get it all sorted out via diplomacy instead of via burnination, you know, for lack of a better time. term. I kind of think Arnold's ideas will be, will be what is needed. If the Elder Gods wake up and they don't like what happened to Gellner. Yeah. Because yeah. what if they just like wanted to get rid of their imperfect, disgraced world that they messed up so much and they just want to go off and create the perfect world again but they do not want to see their disgrace. So like, okay, let's just destroy this thing just to get rid of it. I mean, so, the bright side to destroying this world would mean that there wouldn't be any more pesky gods here. Yeah, and they also wouldn't have to worry about all the stuff happening again because they'd all be dead. What the shit is that comic? No. I'm just... Uh, no, that's just... No. Anyways, uh, yeah, go on. What? Sorry. What? <laughs> Sorry. That, that's worse than the cookie monster. That's That was... That's yeah. awful. Uh, wait, somehow wait, wait, this what got is a this? bunch of Reddit points. <laughs> what is this? Why, Hoblet? Why? This Please, just, no. This is just... No. We're not putting that on the oh, podcast, right? I no. no. I'm put censored right there. I am I am not putting that in the podcast. <laughs> um, this this on the other hand is hilarious. Okay. Oh, it's uh, Zanuck standing right underneath Sarah Doman saying, So far on the surface, we haven't seen any <laughs> God. Wait, say that again? Hold on. Oh of course not. The gods don't just wander around Lumbridge. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen any gods at all. It's right in front of Sarah Doman. Okay, you know, I was just <laughs> oh my that god, that's happened. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, that, that is fucking. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just gonna be in the podcast. That, that is a lore <laughs> fail. Lore <laughs> fail indeed. Wow. One oh four. That's, that's wow. gorgeous. <laughs> Okay, I need to post this on the clan forum right now. Just wow, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> of course not, they don't just wander around the bridge. Okay, I'm just gonna stick it on a uh, reply to the podcast. <laughs> the, <laughs> ang- the angle is brilliant for that. Yeah. <laughs> Where you're staring right at Sarah Doman, who's blasting away. Oh man. Okay, okay it's off, it's off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here's here's the full album. I think I posted just the first image. Yeah, the second one is 
your character responding with, of course not, the gods don't just wander around Lumbridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Jesus that's even Christ. that's even better. Yeah, but oh my. oh, what? There's another one. Yeah. yeah, it's the it's the character's response to that. Oh okay. my god, oh, that is god. that's hilarious. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Anyways, that yeah. Okay. 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 Um. So yeah, we got a nice, we got nice and off topic again, that. but we have we have stuff to put in the put in the podcast as a background now that's going to be relevant instead of hey, um that stupid comic. Oh, and hey guys, a bunch of penguins and bat spams. Um, we're going to have more things to talk about because uh, Mod Bat Gym is doing an AMA on the seventh. Oh, uh, okay. Oh no. <laughs> well, yeah. That'll that'll get lumped in with whatever ne- the next one is we end up yeah. doing is, which is probably going to be right after divination. All right, so everyone, like, meet back in three days. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, just to screw us podcast. over, divination this week. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, after I'm done spamming to ninety nine to get the super sexy cape, uh, yeah, we'll we'll be doing. That, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, so uh, so there's there's a lot of interesting stuff with Armadale that we have already covered. Now now that we're getting back on topic, is there anything else anybody wants to mention about Armadale? No lime, no. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I guess we can mention we can mention here Bandos. Uh, I, there's concept art of Bandos. Uh, Osborne doesn't actually say hardly anything about Bandos specifically, other than that there is concept art for him. And no Man says Bandos is best god. Uh, he will not be pig like like that, uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, will the not be like. Is not yeah, that concept art we put, uh, two days ago, it's outdated. Like I said, Walter. They were gonna use it for, for Battle of Lumbridge or something. Not totally sure what, but it's it's not being used for what we thought it was being used for. It's outdated, and also there will not be a relationship between Tuska and Bandos because that would be illegal in every state except Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> Louisiana, where everything is legal. <laughs> Sad things that it's almost true. Um, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to ignore what was just said in the chat and move on to Saren and, by proxy, Guthix. Um, so Saren and Guthix's romance confirmed by Osborne on accident, or Good job, air quotes, Osborne. accident. Good job. Um, is there anything else that he really says other than that Saren is, like, high tier, like, higher than we might think? Yeah, um... Basically, what he said about Saren is she's going to be a lot stronger than most of us expected. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there like, well, duh. Just, well, be totally honest, well, duh. I, <laughs> I really honestly expect her to be very, very high tier. Um, okay, so Gina's just said, posted something in the chat that says, apparently the god who loses the Battle of Lumbri dies. But somebody else confirmed from Mod Crow in a live stream that neither god will die. What? Yeah, yeah. It was it was confirmed that neither of them are dying yet. We better not die. So quick. Yeah, that would be kind of ridiculous. You know, it's just some like, annoying this is the first battle and around. Zamorak just gets obliterated. Yeah, I just hate rumors like that. I'm just gonna pretend I didn't see what Lime said. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Wait, Lime said something? <laughs> we're just we're just no, going no, to ignore the entire chat right now. Yep. God. Anyways, back yeah. To, back to gods, <laughs> not this. Anyways, so since we're done with Saren and Guthix now, <clears throat> unless somebody actually has something that are useful, anything else? I don't think so. I, there's other than that, Saren is more powerful than we thought. Um, there isn't a whole lot, which. Okay, you know God what? damn it, Lime. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. 
Okay, you get it. You get it. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Please, thank you. Thank you for removing that. Thank okay. you, Gina. For yeah, I, I, this whole thing is going out right now. Oh my god, this will this will never be spoken of again. Um, moving right along to uh, Sarah Doman, who was who is clearly a rather important player in the world right now. The god of every single word that is good. <laughs> but only by his followers. He did not create the world, but it is but technically his creation. Is, it, is that... We mentioned that in the last one, but uh, is there... It, it needs to be repeated as much as possible. Yeah. Um... So I will I will say I'll kick off any kind of Saradoman discussion we have by saying uh Osborne says that Saradoman is the greatest realist in the world to have achieving lasting peace. He realizes that you can't leave mortals on their own. Someone has to be guarding them and someone sometimes to guard them the guard has to break the rules. I um, Osborne likes Saradoman for being a realist. The peace at this point. Hold on. Uh, Osborne likes Saradoman for being a realist, and at the same time, Osborne doesn't know how Saradoman goes about doing it. Or doesn't like how he goes about doing it, sorry. Yeah. Um, in particular, he doesn't like how he's far too controlling and holier than thou. Yes. Now. I hate those types of people. I hate them. Okay, um. Okay, now anybody else have anything to say about Saradoman here? Now would be the time. Sarah Other than that, he's an ass. Nothing. I just want to start. Hammer's good. What's up with this? And and so much typing. That is, is yeah. Damn, if you can turn off your mic okay. when you're <laughs> typing. The munchies. He's okay. he's eating his mic. Um. Oh yes. <laughs> Yep. I don't There's actually see a whole lot about Sarah Doman. I thought he said more about it, but I guess not. Most of the questions aren't about Sarah Do- weren't about Sarah Doman. I, I don't think anybody cares about Sarah Doman at this point. <laughs> I don't think so either, really. A lot of the Sarah focus is on... Uh, the Battle of Lumbridge is giving a nice chunk of information about him, so... We don't yeah. Have um, and, and likewise, um, we'll move, on, move on to yeah. uh, Zamorak. So, yeah, people um, are climbing is... Sarah Doman. Yep. What? Yeah, <laughs> there's a glitch. Okay, oh, that's that's interesting. <laughs> hey. Uh, that's that's strange, but okay. Um. Anyways, yeah, moving on to Zamorak. Um, we talked a little bit about Zamorak earlier, with regards to <clears throat> the. The history relating to Zamorak and Zeros and the Elder Artifacts, but is there anything else that he mentioned um, in the in the live stream that we should go over? Not that I can think of. Well, I'll bring up one thing. Um, the Siege Beast is a behemoth from Demonheim. This bodes ill. So thus, he's dragging his his Demonheim critters with him. This Which is kind of like an oh boy in before world gorger on the surface. Oh my gosh. Oh. It'd actually be kind of cool to be able to fight them for actual drops outside. Yeah, All but them. at the same I remember time, back when, um, I remember back when sinkholes were originally teased, but we didn't know what they were yet. People thought that uh, we were going to be able to um, fight the bosses on the surface. Like you would, you would go into surface dungeons and fight them. I think we talked about this in one of the one of our first couple podcasts, um, where we were mentioning we were talking about um, how it'd be nice that or if they did um, <clears throat> resource dungeons um, going all the way up to one twenty instead of stopping at eighty five, where in the more upper level resource dungeons you have bosses, or various things that you can do to get some of the dungeoneering items only. Yeah. It's like a hex hunter, a surface hex hunter, or yeah, some kind I of... Yeah, I remember that, somehow. 
I, I'm yeah. still disappointed they haven't released Beyond uh, Beyond 85 with Resource Dungeons. Still. Yeah. I really thought they were going to go on like a crazy Resource Dungeon rampage and keep adding them. It would be, yeah, it would be, there's so many places that it would be nice. Or that it would even just like make sense or just to have, just to have it added in. I mean, and resource dungeons don't interrupt the world, really. Yeah. It just adds to it. There's, there's a lack of actual use to training and engineering beyond, you know, 85. Mm -hmm. In terms of the actual level requirement. Yeah. Tokens, I mean, yeah, you're always gonna need tokens, but, like, you know, literally, Requirement wise, eighty five is really cut off. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Because after eighty five, that eighty five is Frosties, and then and that's it. Uh, I, I mean, your Chaotics are all are all eighty. Um, 80. They're level eighty. Um, and, yeah, yeah, and the, the Sneaker Peepers eighty two. Yeah, I mean everything that is not self because Dungeoneering is so self contained. I mean yep. that's the that's the problem with the skill, and that's one of the reasons I don't like it. Yeah, is because it's completely self-contained. It's a game within a game. It's a mini game, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not yeah. a bad thing. It's a nice skill, but it is technically a mini game mm-hmm. with with a leveling, and I have no problem with that. It, it's still very much a skill. Um, just I think I think something I would really like with it is I remember. I remember really wanting, you know, like, additional dungeons before we really knew a lot of the lore of it, before mm-hmm. they started came, coming out with the next bits. I really yeah. thought that it was going to be, they release Damonheim, they give us the last floors, and then they make some more in other places. Like, I thought it would be really cool to have a, a Jade Vine, you know, one at the end of a Jade Vine, and be a nature yeah. set of dungeons. I remember you had that Lajra uh, suggestion with some floors. Huh. Yeah, even if, even adding... Yeah, the I mean, Lazra, Lazra floors. I forgot about those. Yeah. I never did flush those out, did I? <laughs> well, they had some detail in it. I remember that. Yeah, and then I lost it, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. That's just... It's some... It's an interesting to think about the implications that uh, Demonheim has with this. I wonder if they'll... If it'll end up being like... They crack Demonheim open, and, or there's some kind of rift, something that like there's there's all sorts of things that can happen with the Zamorak bringing stuff from Demonheim because yeah, that stuff. stuff. Just, I want to know what the finale is going to be now. Like, what's the point of it? Yeah, yeah really. Because the whole thing was, oh, we're trying to free Zamorak, but Zamorak's already free, Billrak. What you gonna do? Well, I mean, the thing is, the the sagas are all. Designed as they are played in the past, or yep. you oh, were definitely. playing, you were watching a memory from the past. Yeah, but just the problem is, you know, we're exploring Dungeoneering, and as we we're exploring Daemonheim, and as we build down, we're learning the history of it, and we learn that the whole thing is Billrak trying to circumvent the edicts to get Zamorak back, and then the edicts break and Zamorak comes back and Damon Hunt has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Okay, Walter says something in the chat. Um, uh, he says to talk, to mention um, that Osborne said this explicitly, correct? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, he says, I think how Zamorak came back, how that ties into the ritual, the strange the ritual power, thing. what happened to Billrock, I the think ritual. all of these are important things we need to know about. Um, and then Robo thinks he means ritual stone marker when he says ritual, uh, yeah. and that that makes sense because the ritual stone is like, oh, by the way, here it is at the bottom of Demonheim. This makes perfect sense. And it's not. It, it also goes on to specifically state it's the original. So what's the one yeah. over at the uh, ritual site? And th- that yeah. brings what's up the, the question of what difference does it make? He yes. means the original really because the one he has is from Brennuske. Yeah, but then, but if the other one serves the purpose just as well, what's the point? Like, you can't get it from there, though, apparently. I, I just, I, I fail to see the implications, or, or how, like, if you can just randomly steal the ritual stone, and yeah, then it, there's another one, and there's a ritual that goes off pretty, basically without a hitch, Jalen gets sacrificed, and... I mean, and assuming that Lucian didn't get greedy 
everything would have gone back to normal. Like, there would have been no problems. Yeah. Of course, clearly we had that second part happen, but... <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the problem is, though, just... As, as I mentioned near the start, the sixth age came to... Uh, they didn't wrap up storylines that should have been wrapped up. Yeah, everything should have been finished before they went on to six stage stuff. Just any any trailing god stories because Damonheim is really in an awkward place right now. Yeah, yeah. That's that's really the big problem. I'm still yeah, wondering if I should be disappointed. <laughs> also, okay, the um, I'm curious to see what they do because what they do will determine if I'm disappointed. Okay, so there's a, there's a nice little list of things that we should probably still talk about. Uh, a lot of these things are relating to this topic that I want to co- the last topic that I want to cover. Um, one that directly influences us now. Um, he Osborne mentioned something about the infernal dimensions. Um, we've re- we've just recently let people know that Zamorak has got them in a demon pact himself. Uh, they work for him because he has kind of tied them up in a Rumpelstiltskin style pact. Yeah. So he's Zeros. Wait, wait, where does it say that? <laughs> this is on the thread. The, that was revealed in the Book of the Gods and they were talking about in the Godless book, they said how how Bion was saying that Zeros and Zamorak got the demons up in a pact and Ooks doesn't like it, that's why he's against him. Yeah. So I think that's what he's referring to. That's certainly so that's a lot of... The demons that follow Zamorak and Zeros aren't following them because they worship them, but because they got... They have to. Into yeah. I'm sure some of them certainly follow them because they want to, but... Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, I also like the idea that Karamil will be one of the signature heroes in essence. Yeah. I'm not sure they really consider her a signature hero, because... Osborne saying that doesn't mean Gianna is saying it. Mm, not necessarily, but she is going to be in different quests. Yep, that, that does please me quite a bit. And she'll be a, she'll probably be a mainstay in the sixth age stuff. Yeah. Just as that kind of as the godless kind of godless you know, representative founding. almost. Yeah, I, I feel like she's a much better representative. And we discussed this last podcast. <laughs> Um. Okay, so th- we have that. Um, as we'll go back, I'm just going to mention a couple of these things as we before we move forward. Uh, going back to Zeros, the Zerites are a faction within the Zerosians, and they're zealots of Zeros. Um, yeah. I think that's a really odd way of putting it. Yeah, it's like I, I like the, of Zeros. I, I somebody asked this on Reddit, and then I responded to it, and I said. Uh, Zerosians are followers of Zeros. Zerite means of Zeros. That that was my interpretation of it, but Osborne obviously doesn't have the same idea. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so pretty much the people on the forums. Yeah. 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 Okay, a couple more things about the Elder Artifacts and the Elder Gods. Um, there's I mentioned that there's a connection between the Eastern Lands and the Elder Gods. Um... I just briefly, but I did mention that. Uh, Dayalt, we're gonna talk a little bit about Lime's favorite topic, the Dayalt. Actually, I'll just let yep. Lime talk about it. Have fun. Alright, so, apparently, uh, there's this obscure reference to the secret Dayalt refinery in, uh, the Dayalt mines in yep. Myrvich. And... Found it first. <laughs> Thank okay, you. hipsters. Anyways, go on. Uh, there's this big Dayalt refinery, and... Yeah. Uh, the vampires want us to shut up about it. They get really defensive when we start talking with the miners about it. And uh, Mod Osborne in this uh, live stream, he mentioned that Dayalt is linked to Hem Alchemy, which uh, and there will possibly be a Dayalt storyline. I don't saying, actually remember what Hem Alchemy is, so if you can, it's a study it's of like blood. It's like alchemy, but for blood, you turn things into blood. Okay. They could potentially so, solve the vampires' problem and put humans on well, an equal level as vampires. Mm-hmm. But it had Drakken- solved. It had solved the vampires' problems, but then Draken wanted to cover it up because Drakken he didn't, want to, let, he didn't want to let the humans free. 
Why does he still want well, the Dale or if it's gonna help that? And he doesn't want that to happen. They want the Dale lore so that they can have their own supply of blood. Do we actually know if humans they don't want the humans to know about it, is the uh, idea of it now. There was one um, other that thing was actually that... it was briefly covered in branches of Dark Mire. Very, very skillfully. Uh there was one other thing in um that Maud Osborne mentioned earlier. It's that Dale apparently highlights this weakness of the vampires. So it's going to be kind of difficult how to tie it all in. Also, um, Dale was also made by the Stone of Joss being there, like how Root Essence was made. Yeah, it's a byproduct. Yep. So, okay, so that's 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 an interesting thing to think about, and I guess that kind of ties into the um, the Zamoraki and stuff that we were talking about because of the vampires and um, all of that stuff. Um, also, there's uh, Mon Osborne confirms that the enchanted key is not an elder art. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the elder key is not an elder artifact. Just saddening. Yeah. Mod Raven said that in an yeah. earlier podcast as well. He said he says, it's overpowered. Yeah, he says maybe a god artifact, but certainly not an elder artifact. Um, and he mentioned there was a question about the horn, the elder horn, whatever you want to call that. Um, yeah. And in in Player and Port's lore, they talk. Of, I actually haven't read this specifically myself, but um, uh, Quinn, Quinn, Quinn has, has a horn. horn. He used to control the uh, uh, sea monsters. Yep, and he says that that it's open that that might be an elder <laughs> artifact. Another option is the frost and horn, which we have looked at as like like the lore enthusiasts have seen that as oh well that's that could very well be an elder artifact and we've seen it in game and there's references and we've that had it. Jmons have made that have said that we there is an item in game currently that is an elder artifact that we have like there's something something along those lines that we've interacted with. And yeah, that's that why people were thinking the enchanted key at first. Yep. But um I think I think the frosting horn isn't a bad bad theory. And but didn't also Osborne shoot that, that down? Also, I yeah, want to he mention, did shoot down. huh? He did. Yeah. I don't think he did. He could he not, couldn't remember not, what it was. Not in this podcast. To, in the earlier part, he said that the frosting horn isn't an elder artifact. No. Well, because it would because by the what frosting horn does, you know, he he keeps saying. Like, all the Elder Artifacts have a purpose. Like, they're not just randomly super powerful things that do stuff. Um, or that they don't do specific things, they just do everything. They do specific things. Like, the, the crown is there to locate the other artifacts. The, um, the staff is, does, I can't remember what the staff does. It's nature, I think. Well, has something to do with nature, I think, because Armada wanted to make nature on that one planet. Yeah. He didn't have the stuff. Yeah, but, and then, but the important part about the Frost and Horn is that it amplifies power. That is specifically stated by Azanadra in a temple at, Cent- at Centiston. So that makes, it's like, well, there's its purpose. So it like, it's, it makes perfect sense that it would be a god art, an elder artifact, but apparently it isn't. I mean, I don't understand what purpose amplifying power would be in the creation of a world. Like, they can always just... You eld- you amplify the Stone of Jass's power to make you to be able to do more stuff. Like, it- the, stone, the Stone of Jass's power doesn't need to be, uh, doesn't need to be amplified. But do it's we already know that? that powerful. But we, do we actually know that? <laughs> so, Kid says, so Saradoma doesn't splash as often. <laughs> yeah, just some confirm hits, you know. Oh my god. 128, that's, that's going in, okay. So, wait, I've, I've probably put this screenshot in the, um, podcast, like, in various podcasts, like, ten times already, but it's, it's just Wonderful. too good to pass up. Wait, which one? Uh, the uh, Saradoma splash. Wait, do we actually have that somewhere? I do. Okay, I need another link. I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it after the after the podcast, or I can just have uh, just say um, go after I start the last thing. Um, uh, a couple.
couple other things that, okay, we're gonna move a little bit away from the gods now, uh, it's already been way too long here, um, but we kind of knew that this was gonna happen when we started, so. Um, so the gods, moving away from the god discussions, uh, a couple more secular things to talk about. Uh, the Avianzi, not the Aviantis, the Avianzi, um, as, the other uh, Lyme question? I don't think so. No, this isn't the, regarding the home world. I'll, okay. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But um, the Avianzi and the Incando Dwarves are apparently the best smiths in the game. Did we know that the Avianzi were good smiths? Yes, because well, the they made the gods. They're the ones that made it. Oh, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I thought that was. Well established anyway. I I I guess I just missed it. Um, yeah, I mean, just, I it wasn't put something him... that was very obviously said. Yeah, I wouldn't have put him on par with the Encando. I mean, the Encando are the legendary yeah, smiths. Perfect sense that they are, but but they're birds, not dwarves. Yeah. Well, who cares? Okay. No. They do drop a lot of adamant bars, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, orange. I mean, you might wonder what they're doing with it all. They do have decent armor. <laughs> so. Yeah, they do have that armor to make. I bet. Mm-hmm. I bet armadillo armor is made using uh, adamant for them. It's probably it's some a ton kind of, of adamant. Yeah, they they, uh, they change their adamant. This is giving me a ton of ideas for the Ar- no. uh, ABNC homeworld for for my next quest. It's like oh, mountains of adamant and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, and um let's see here. There's there's one more thing I want to talk about before we go into Lime's last question or Lime's one uh, the other Lime question that he asked. Uh the Anima Mundi is said to be bleeding out. Um and that's not good. Osborne okay. said that does that mean Virago is Virago is slowly dying? And he says, "Oh, you could say that." It'd be an interesting storyline for the future. So, uh, Virago Quest series? Yeah, that what? would actually be interesting, because the fact that you can talk to his face before you do any boss fighting, then that'd be really nice to see in a quest, just to have some explanations. And it would be nice for him to at least, well, for Virago to mention least, the Living Rock. Or even for cameos. It's a yeah, super too. useful tool for cameo appearances. Like, oh, you go talk to Virago, because he'll say X, Y, and Z. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah, the planet is dying. Divination will help repair it. That's what Walter says. It makes sense. Do you know I, what, I mean, uh, do you know what vibe I'm getting uh, from this whole like the anim and the anima mundi is bleeding out? Mm-hmm. It's it feels a lot like Guthix was really linked to the anima mundi. So yeah, yeah that so would make sense. Well, we know that. that I mean, that it, going yeah, back to it, Saren was the the keeper of the anima mundi or whatever. She was hi- highly linked to the Anima Mundi, so and then Guthix was highly linked to Saren, so, so it makes got... sense that the two by proxy would be super closely linked. And I mean, just think about it: like the Druids, by definition, are like the kind of um, naturalists. The naturalists, yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense that so Guthix you... dies. The Anima Mundi is it's you've missed in the trouble. Missing... I wonder component. when we're going to find about out about the nudist subsect of Druids. What? Really? Uh, okay. Yeah. What? That would be okay. hilarious. That wasn't funny. We're getting into that R-rated quest idea. Exactly. Yeah. Whoa, wait, wait, <laughs> so Amiskut is allowed to make jokes like that, but I'm not? I totally missed the joke. <laughs> I'm fine with not hearing it again. <laughs> yeah, Anyways, yeah, you're good. Moving, moving right along. Um, so, there's one more thing that I that I do want to talk about. And that is the fact that he says, that Osborne says explicitly, he would love to make all these various homeworlds. Vampirium, the Avianzi homeworld, the, oh, yeah. um, Line question. uh, the Infernal Dimensions, the Penguin, the, uh, Penguin Motherland. <laughs> he wants to make all of them, but the cost is prohibitive. Yeah. It takes so long and so much dev time to make one of these things that, it's extremely difficult, especially when you have Priftadinas. Yeah. 
as and kind Metaphos. of like <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Menaphos yeah. too. Like there's we so many that in about there's five so many years. regions. I feel like we can really get about one large city a year, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, we got Darkmire yeah. two years ago. We this got year we got year that. this year we got RuneScape three. Um, yep. And we're not sure exactly what we're going to end up getting. We might lose a city this year, for all we know. Yeah. Um, bye, Lumbridge. <laughs> okay, bye, Lumbridge. <laughs> um, we lost it. <laughs> um, we, did, we didn't get any cities, but they added a lot of stuff into the, like, in-between cities. Like, they, yeah. they filled in a lot of dead space in the last year and a half. They filled yep. in one of the dead spaces with a giant crater. Yeah, that, well, I mean, a, a, tr- a dead space with a truly dead space. Um, okay. Literally, yeah. Um, but yeah, so they, it's a, it's prohibitively expensive with regards to time what? to just, like, be like, oh, I guess we'll just get the, get this home world. Cause they, it has to be up to their quality standards. Like they, and that takes months and months of preparation. And in the case of Kryptonas, uh, what, how it, Kryptonas, the elf city. Kryptonas. In the case of Kryptonas, it takes years of preparation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he, he didn't then go on to say that we will be visiting one of the, at least one of the homeworlds. And yep. he also said that we will soon be getting a fairy ring to the Naragi homeworld. Yeah. Anna was just weeded out for divination, so she was busy. Anna. Yes. Anna's the fact that Anna is the lead dev for Divination makes me feel so much better about the skill, because I know it's immediately, A, going to be amazing, and B, going to have a pet. <laughs> a wisp That is pet. true. A You're wisp. going to get a wisp pet, or something something like that. A wisp oh. follower, a wisp hey. pet. This, it's going to... It's we get inevitable. A pet from of Dark uh, yes, yes. We yes. had... There were pets in the quest. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait, what? We we had oh. to hunt down the uh, oh, vampires. Oh yeah, those little pets. tiny right. blood belts. Those were so cute. Why didn't we get one of those? But I we didn't get know. one as a reward. That's really depressing now that I think about it. Yeah, and we had to. Know, <laughs> we had to we didn't her. know that uh, that Anna was like this when yeah. when we first. We didn't know. So she we weren't pets. expecting it. And then Firemaker's Curse was like, "Sup? We got pets. We got pets. I'm kind we got of, pets. I, I kind just of imagine have to have that pet behind me right now." Yeah, and then, blue and one like, is my main pet. Yeah, but like, but like, it is Anna. Like, you guarantee there's going to be a pet. Somewhere and it's in the just, class. it's just funny because it's yeah. so consistent too. <laughs> yeah, because World Awake had had the had the crest spot, and yeah, yeah definition's definitely going to have a wish pet. It's got to, or something, something like that. You heard yeah. it here first. You heard it here first. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, one of the signs is just going to be a cosmetic sign that makes a pet appear behind you. <laughs> He's so cute, yeah, know, right? You just, but I, I, I can see one of the signs or one of the portents being, um, being a wisp, a wisp follower to help yeah. with whatever. I can totally see that. I've and, never thought about even, that like that. And even if it's not one of the signs or portents, it's at least going to come from solids, and it will be tied to divination in some way. Yeah. It's it, it just it has to happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. It really does. It is yeah. But yeah. it is destined. It is destined. <laughs> it's funny because now so, we're yeah. expecting a pet, and if we don't get one, we will rage. We'll rage. Yeah. I don't. I wouldn't if say we we'll get, rage, but we'll, be, we'll, just, be, we'll really be really surprised. surprised. Yeah. Very. We will be. We will be surprised. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! Well, make me post in recent updates. <laughs> I'll be posting like Anna. Why you no know pet? <laughs> in the recent updates, just Anna, why you no know pet? That's the that's the thread, the entire thread. Why you no know pet? And she'll be like, and, what? And everyone post it. Just say support, but spell it very wrong. Ah, <laughs> support. Yeah. Yep. For the lore, oh we need pets. Oh man. Supports <laughs> all the all of the incorrectly spelled supports. <laughs> it's so it's just like, what is going on here? I feel like I'm missing something because oh I, I have I just have this deep feeling that she has no idea she's doing it. She's being typecast. <laughs> like she's just like, oh yeah, we could. Uh, why don't we give them like a little pet? 
like, yeah, that's a cool idea, and hasn't doesn't hasn't even realized she started a chain of pets. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, didn't she work on the menagerie too? Yeah, <laughs> though she did do surprised. bonfires. She didn't get a pet out of that. But we had the it's, but it's the, we had the, the spirit thing. But we yeah, had the spirit. spirit. Yeah. So it's still still a interaction. But it's still that kind of pet ish thing. <laughs> it's yeah. so weird. She is she did the so social so slayer yes. pets too. Oh my god! Yes, yes. She did. oh my god, you're right. She has been typecast. Oh my god. Okay, we need wisps now. <laughs> yeah. Did she? Please. Each, she each did, level. She did each of the boons. Oh my, oh my god. god. That's what it's going to be. The boons you can unlock also unlock a pet. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. No, we're not at two hours yet. All we're of, not going <laughs> to get to two hours. All of those pets. Oh my god. Anna, Anna is... I, I do think that th- that's like her thing though. Yeah. And it's 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 hilarious, and she's great. Yeah. She, I mean, so she did do the corgi. Makes it even better. Yeah, she did. She did the diamond jubilee. That's oh, oh my she God. did, she... didn't she? Yeah, and then we got corgis out of that. <laughs> and you got corgis out of that. Uh, she, so she did. She did the Soul Wars Jad pet. What? No, no, she yeah. didn't do those. Those were. I don't think. Like, I don't think those attack. were released yet, or those were released before she got there. Those or were released in... quite quite early on. <laughs> We should try to think now we're just gonna think every pet in game is somehow related to her. Yeah, I just I just <laughs> opened up the pet thing. Out. Let's see. So, hmm. Mob Titans thing was already. Yeah, she did. She did the Crestbot. She did the Baby Aquanite. She did Freezy. She did Searing Flame, Glowing Ember, Twisted Fire Starter, and Warming Flame. Um, I think that's all she did. But it's the majority of the new ones. But that's the majority yeah. of the new pets. Yeah. The only ones that aren't new is the baby troll and Vitalis that she didn't do. So, like, you probably know Wait, whenever there's a pet, it was it was probably her over their shoulder, just like, you know what you should do? Put a pet in there. Yeah, 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 you know, like, um, when, when, Mod, when Chriselle was working on a Virago, you know, he's like, hey, uh, anybody have any ideas for drops? And then he goes and talks to Anna, because she makes ridiculous hard losses. And she's like, oh, um, why don't you add a pet? And he goes, Oh, that's a cool idea. So they added a pet. <laughs> I can totally see that. Oh man, that's wonderful. Like, you know, he, he's going around looking for useful, useful information about um, about you know boss drops. You know, somebody else suggested the degradable level ninety, and Anna's just like, yeah, why don't you a why pet? Got a pet. I will make sure. <laughs> but it but it really is like that's that is kind of like the well I. I killed the boss and I got a pet out of it. Like it's it's the it's Anna this, thing. Like what the heck's the It point is of the that? Anna thing. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. <laughs> and we're we're writing we're writing out in the chat at this point like what the what the different god the she mod did a little town of Damonheim too. Yeah, oh, she, yeah did. she did. That was her first event. So yeah, that that is that is a pet. I definitely consider the hat a pet. Because it's a speakable to Heim crowd. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I wasn't around for that, so I do not know. I so I do know that that was her first event. That, is that true. was her that was first, her first thing she thing. developed. I totally yep. forgot about that. Mm-hmm. It's almost the most adorable thing in the world. That was so old that <laughs> Gina Titan, hated. Yeah, you're right, Robo. Titan Titan was the mod whose characters always had last names. Everybody else was just you know brother blah blah blah. This is this is Jake, Titan. No, this is Cofirius Raspilion. Yeah, <laughs> you always had like the really. And it's the name. most most convoluted last names and names in general too. Yep, and um, and Anna made fun of that in Branches of the Dark Fire. Speaking yeah. of, you know, all all the characters had really weird names. It was like totally on purpose. You could tell. And you have and you have the um. When you get your vampire name, it's yeah. you get a, just a laundry list of these just out there names. Yeah, and yeah. you could even choose Titan as your last name. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> Mod Titan with all the right click options. Oh God. Um, and yeah, Mod Ash is the player spoof fourth wall stuff. And, and uh, Mod, Mod Raven Mod is the killing children. Um, yeah. Mod Mod Wilson is cats. <laughs> And Mod Molter is ponies. Yes. Anyways. Yeah. Moving on from there. <laughs> Moving right along. Yeah. So I think I, I'm pretty sure that covers everything that we should cover. Wait, uh, wait, the, wait, wait, wait. One more thing. Wait. Oh, that one. 
towards the end of the podcast, I made a, I asked the question if the next pirate quest would put the irate in pirate. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I can no hear, lime. I can hear you too everyone long. watching this just groan. In my yeah. Head. No lime. No. <laughs> just and, no. And, uh, Osborne goes, oh, maybe we should hire you for the puns. <laughs> And all the rest of us were like, oh god, no. Oh god, no, please no. Oh god, no, no, please. I will make sure to make a pet. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I think, I don't think we explicitly covered that, no. Yeah. I was hoping, I, I, I don't know, I was half hoping to avoid it. But, um, I, I, if Walter's not gonna let me live it down if I don't. So, I guess one last thing before we 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 finish up here um walter said and put has put this in four places now um the dragon can are reactionary they're not there as a preventative measure and so thus they don't stop it before it happens um yeah, they just... but they use their curse as an itch yeah or the curse is an itch they and it's something that builds up over time so when they get the itch, when the Stone of Jazz starts being used, and it starts to burn more and more until the point where they just snap, that is when they will go after the entities that are using the Stone of Jazz, the false users, which is what happened with Lucian, who was using it over a period of time. Yeah. Um, and that is also why we weren't per- turned to a pile of ashes. We were only we only slightly annoyed them. We tickled them. Because we only briefly used it to technically bump the stone. We yeah. touched it like twice. It's basically like walking up to a bear and poking it with a stick at this and getting lucky. <laughs> I, I wouldn't I wouldn't quite put that analogy out there, but because I don't think the bear is going to be like, um, nope. Well, you helped me out getting honey. <laughs> <laughs> See the how about no bear picture right now. <laughs> and that will be right there. Okay, yes. one forty six. <laughs> Alright. Is that everything? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Not okay. everything. Unless anybody else wants to elaborate more on the no. dragon can very briefly. No, I think I think we're good. We're we're just I, about to hit two hours. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but yeah, we need to we need to call it a day. Um, but yeah, so the so I, the call is the call started significantly before the podcast. So yeah, I only have an hour twenty twenty four on mine. So I get an hour late. Yeah, we're at about an hour forty, an hour forty five right now. Which is still but, absurdly long. Which but I mean when Osborne co- goes and <laughs> Tells us everything. Tells us everything that we want to know. <laughs> Osborne's one. And he only no commented on one thing. Yeah, it was oh, wait, we didn't mention that. We didn't what? mention that. Had we no. mentioned that? Yeah we did. No. We talked about V as a god. We didn't no mention more. it specifically Osborne's no comment on it. But that Yeah, we matter. mentioned Move on. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I'll, for Lime's sake, Osborne said, or Osborne was asked whether V was, V7 was gonna be in a new quest series, or in a new quest, or as a god, I don't remember exactly what. Okay. And Osborne straight no commented. Yeah. So, AK confirmed. Um, pretty much. Okay, I think that's everything, unless somebody else has something they really, really, really no. want to bring up. Don't. Well done. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> then then we're no. done and Lime. We're going to ignore that. Um, My name is no longer. I will before I go. I will say this: Osborne used a guide for uh, Elemental Workshop Three. No. Yeah. Oh. Not not impressed. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not impressed. However, he did say he was going to try and do me like, part three without a guide. I did. I did two. use a guide for that because of the. <laughs> I thought I was shades. bad, but I beat him, so I'm happy now. Yeah. All right. So oh, he's the rude podcast. With you too. Cough, cough. Okay, but yeah. Anyways, I, I believe we're done here. Um, the next one of these, there will certainly be one after divination. Um, we'll probably be one. The month of and, it, and it depends on how many, how many more of these, these uh, lore epic. things come up in these yeah. epic re- reveals, re- revealathons. Series of yeah, month, revealathons. Month, I guess you could say. Because we're going to need to do one after Owen, too. Oh. 
Yeah. We've got like five podcasts. I'm wondering if we can just clump the Owen and Divination together. Yeah, but then you know... Because I really don't want to do one podcast a week this month. I know. Then then you know we're going to end up with two-hour podcasts like this one. Yeah. All right. I don't well, know. Let's, well, let's end it before we hit two hours. Anyways, yeah. so stay. The next one will come out uh, in uh, probably two or three weeks. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, Whoever is still listening to this, <laughs> you're a trooper. Um, you get cookies, and we really appreciate it. Uh, and if you haven't.